We believe that videos, images, words, and sounds have the absolute power to inform, inspire, and entertain. We are united under the virtues of safety and knowledge. We are a training community of learners and teachers who encourage and energize each other to achieve greatness. We are pilots, videographers, photographers, freelancers, business owners, enthusiasts, experts, and apprentices. We are creators. We are the Drone Youth. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul, and we have another guest, actually, another instructor here at Drone You. Welcome, John, aka High Wind FPV. <laughs> Thanks. Casey. It's good to be here. Dude, awesome to have you on here. You know, we've been trying to make a move towards like, FPV racing and kind of getting a professional on here because that's what Drone You is all about is teaching from experience. And yeah. I'm not an FPV racer, but Albuquerque seems to be a hot spot by having you and also another incredible racer here in town. Yeah, yeah. We have quite a few pretty good racers here. Um, and there's a lot of, there's several of us that compete on the top level for sure i mean it's great there's sean taylor sean stanford you're here yep. uh that i mean i think there's a a lot of talent here that's in the state and that you guys have kind of taken over one particular park on saturdays which i absolutely love to see yep but um but anyway guys welcome uh john i, I i'm so used to saying john rupert because he's like <laughs> the lawyer and then there's john our production guy and then john casey so welcome john honestly it's awesome to have you so we're gonna actually you're gonna be answering all the fpv questions mm -hmm. Um, which is awesome. You're also going to be teaching a class here at Drone U on yep. getting into drone racing, building your racer, and kind of the steps to progress into that and make it a lifestyle if people want to do that. Indeed, it is, in fact, a lifestyle. Do you, do you enjoy living the lifestyle? I enjoy it quite a bit. Living the dream, <laughs> I tell people all the time. Hey, I believe it. I mean, I, you've been to Dubai twice in the last month, yep. so I totally believe that. All right, well, let's get into today's question. Uh, again, everyone, thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you want to get these podcasts downloaded to your phone regularly and conveniently, just subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you want to get more from John Casey, you can follow him on Instagram, right? Highwind FPV. Yep. yep. Cool. Well, today's question is brought to you by, are you a drone pilot? Are you operating under a Section 333 exemption? Then you may be familiar with Item 27 which requires you to get a property release for every flight over property. Legal Flyer is an app for iPhone and iPad that helps you create professional property releases in less time than it takes to do a pre-flight check. You can add your pilot info, you can sign in, hand it to the property owner for their signature. But wait a second. Legal Flyer's advanced integration automatically adds latitude, longitude, and even altitude. Then add a panorama straight from the app. Everything drops into a single page PDF you can share with a single tap. It's compliance at light speed. Visit LegalFlyer.com for more information or get it straight from the App Store. Legal Flyer, property releases for professional drone pilots.
Good day, gents. This is Steve Saunders from Utah. And I'm calling to ask about propellers and specifically which propellers to use um, as far as FPV racing goes. I uh, There's just so many different pitches and sizes and things like that and regular or tri-blade. I mean, there's a lot of different props out there to use. Um, so I was just calling to see what the best way to determine which propeller you should use for your FPV setup. Is there a formula you can use to determine this or is it just trial and error? Uh, if you guys could shed a little light on that for me, I would appreciate it greatly. Have a great day, guys, and keep up the good work. As always, Drone U is awesome. So is there a magic formula, John? Not so much. Um, that is a great question, though. Um, my personal favorite propeller is a 5x4x3, so that's a 5-inch tri-blade propeller with a 4-inch four four inch pitch. pitch, I guess. Is so the best for every way to put it. one turn, you gain 4 inches of elevation? Theoretically, yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, now, but that's for a certain type of quad, right? Uh, yeah, so normally I fly a 5-inch quad that'll take maximum 5-inch propellers, um, and it also depends highly on your motor. Um, a lot of people are moving into the high KV motors, which means over 2,500 KV. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have to be careful about what prop you're using on those kind of motors. Why is that an issue? Um, you can overload the motor and either fry the motor, ESC, lots of different stuff, as what? well as efficiency. So if you're pulling 35 amps out of your motor on 20 amp ESCs, not only could you blow something, but you're going to be eating batteries real quickly. Interesting. All right. So if I have a different type of quad, though, so let's say I'm using, I can't, because you, you have an X frame, right? Yeah. And you actually have your own frame. Is yeah, that right? Yeah. Yeah. The Highwind X5. Which will is take, the one that's right behind me, right? That's yep, standing up. Yep. Um, and it'll take it'll take up to five and a half inch propellers, but I use five inch on it. So what's the benefit of having a, a I guess, a tri blade. I know I'm moving questions here really quickly. Uh, so having a tri blade, most pro racers you'll see use tri blades. Um, it gives you a little bit more punch on the low end. They're not maybe necessarily as fast on the high end between 80 and 100 percent throttle. Okay. But they're much more responsive, and you get a better curve throughout your entire. A better power curve. Yeah, I better guess you power could say. curve. Yeah. Interesting. So going back to the frame, you have an X frame. If mm -hmm. someone has an H frame. I mean, you said again, right there, the magic formula. You got to know what your motors are pushing, your yeah. KV. Yeah, and so that that's a big thing. There's not necessarily a magic formula, but there's a lot of info out there about different motor and prop setups. So my favorite setup right now is a 2205-2700 KV on a 5x4x3 prop. That's my absolute favorite setup at the moment. Interesting. Okay, cool. So if we know the motor, we can go to the spec sheet and yeah. kind of see like maybe what's recommended. Yeah, as far as so prop. most manufacturers will have a spec sheet, or I believe it's called rotorbench.com. There's a guy that goes on, and he has a bunch of different motor and ESC combos with every propeller that's out there and there's graphs that you can see efficiency how much thrust it's making how many grams per watt all kinds of different stuff like that wow and so that's that's a big resource to have to be able to go to and see in fact that's what i've been doing recently with my long range setup is i went in and looked at the cobra motors i'm using and seeing six inch propellers five inch propellers what's making the most grams per watt pretty much Gotcha. Interesting. Now, would you would you say that there's a certain type of prop um, for certain pilots? Meaning, if you're a pro pilot, right, you want the tripod props. If you're a new pilot, meaning also durability too, yeah, because so, that's a big issue. You know, so that's a big blowing. thing. Um, so HQ Prop is coming out with a lot of silly stuff right now. They have quad blades. They even now have a six blade prop that they're coming out with. Um, but HQ is known for not being quite as durable as other brands. Okay. So like dowel props are known for being unbreakable. So if you're a new pilot, if, you may want a dowel Yeah, prop. and they're cheaper. They're a lot harder to break. I've seen people smack full tilt into a tree 
and take right back off because their dowel props are perfectly fine. That's dope. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, what if you're a more experienced guy like yourself? So I use HQ props. Um, they make they're the most efficient and they make the most thrust out of similar type props you know what i mean so like a five inch bull nose hq usually makes the most thrust out of that type of prop compared to gym fan or whatever interesting very cool info very cool info got it i mean it seems like it's going so deep and now i mean we're even seeing dji try to get into the fpv game yeah. right what did they release just today yeah i think it was just yesterday they released i think they're called tachyon ESCs. um they're kind of in my opinion most people's opinion that i've seen a little bit behind the game they're 18 and 20 amp ESCs. They're a little bit big compared to what we're used to using now. Um, they have, they're just now getting into the one shot 125 thing, which is makes your update rate faster on your ESCs and stuff like that. So they're, they're a little bit behind the game, but it's nice to see big people like DJI trying to get into the racing world. No, definitely. Very, it, it could be a ever changing world if they do get into it. Yeah. Um, so if now one question I have just because I want to tie this around into the class that you're teaching because you go over how to build a setup for yourself uh -huh. if, if you're you know new getting into this uh, or if you're advanced and you want to make a better uh, drone essentially um, how do we pick our ESCs because we can get that same information from the motor spec sheet right so if we're trying to get that perfect prop ESC motor combo. Yeah, so you normally want to try and over spec your ESCs um, or at least that's the idea where I come from. I come from electric planes and stuff like that where, well, if your motor's pulling 18 amps, you want a 30 amp ESC type thing. But these days we're running 20 amp ESCs on racing quads that we have the potential of pulling 35 amps per corner. <laughs> and that so, could be a problem. Okay, so un for people who don't understand why that's a problem? Why is that a problem? Very it, simply. Yeah, it's you can burn your ESCs very easily. And what happens if you burn the ESC? You're gonna crash. And what happens if you crash? You're probably gonna break something. And but, maybe lose some pride. Yeah, <laughs> but honestly, burning the ESC, especially on a racing quad, is gonna be even if it does crash, that's gonna be what you take or what's broken. Yeah. And normally, when an ESC burns, it takes a motor out with it, especially Kiss ESCs. Interesting. Okay. Um, but a big thing is that you're, we're seeing a lot of 20 amp rated ESCs mm -hmm. that have 100 amp rated FETs on them. So well, what does that mean uh, for people who? Will... So the actual transistors, or for layman's terms, that put power into your motor are way overrated compared to what the ESC is rated for. So like is that Rotor a good Geeks 20 amps it's a, it's a good problem. So like Rotor Geeks 20 amps can take 100 amps technically. But they they at least their fets can take 100 amps, you know what I mean? Maybe not the rest of the circuitry. Interesting. So we are there are underrated ESCs for sure, but People are pulling a lot more than they should out of most things or trying to go to 6S, a lot of people. And so we're having problems trying to figure out the electronics setup to be able to handle voltage and amperage spikes like that. Interesting. Interesting, man. This really goes deep. Yeah. So if you want to know how to build an FPV racer, check out DroneU, thedroneu.com. That class is coming out very soon. What do we yep. think? Like maybe this month in April? Yeah, something like that, I think. That's I hope so. Awesome. Um, all right. Uh, anything else that we left here? We talked about the new DJI ESCs, about choosing the best props for beginners and, and advanced people. I mean, I think this really covers it. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, one more thing to say. I will say that most competitive racing rigs are using five inch props they are more responsive than six inch for the most part especially on tri-blades you're getting more low end punch and so if you're looking at trying to build a racer a competitive racer five inch tri-blades whatever choice you want depending on your motor are the best way to go definitely definitely seems like the, you would know because you're the one with all the experience so yeah. anyway well john thank you so much for being on astro thank new you. we really appreciate it uh don't forget guys if you have questions for fpv racing go to ask upload that question you can actually talk through your phone you can talk through your computer whatever you want to talk through uh, and leave us your question uh steve thanks for that accent that was really uh, great coming from you yeah <laughs> <laughs> love that uh, anyway guys that's gonna do it for us today 
today. Again, thank you so much for listening. Please leave us a review, subscribe. We greatly appreciate it. And that's going to do it for us. So my name is Paul. And I'm John. This is Ask Drone You. We believe that videos, images, words, and sounds have the absolute power to inform, inspire, and entertain. We are united under the virtues of safety and knowledge. We are a training community of learners and teachers who encourage and energize each other to achieve greatness. We are pilots, videographers, photographers, freelancers, business owners, enthusiasts, experts, and apprentices. We are creators. We are the Drone Youth.